Hi guys, uh, I want to share some thoughts on the topic of inspired distributing. There's a lot that could be said on this topic, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to mainly focus on the overriding principles while touching just a little bit on some of the specifics. The first tip to be inspired in your distributing is to be inspired about distributing. Now that, that may sound like a cliche, but it's quite true in the sense that in this video, we're going to discuss a lot of different techniques and little tactics that you can try to inspire people to uh, accept what you're distributing to them. But if you're not actually inspired, if you're not actually enthused, if you're not actually optimistic with how you present the material, you're not going to be able to effectively encourage other people to consider what you have to offer. A big part of being inspired with distributing to me is having it very clear in your own mind why you're doing what it is that you're doing. You know, there's going to be a lot of different things you could try that might inspire someone to uh, accept your materials, but if you're not clear on why you're actually doing them, then you're going to find that you might feel a little bit gimmicky, you might feel a little bit salesy, you may even find that you feel a little bit cheesy and trying some of the things that I might suggest here. So it's very, very important that you have it clear in your own head why you're doing it. And for me, that reason is clear. It's what Jesus said in the Great Commission. He said to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And we have found that distributing tracts of some form is one of the most effective ways for us to accomplish that Great Commission. If you're clear about it, you'll be so much more effective. But if you're double-minded, you're not going to be. And the Bible says that a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways, so make it a priority to be single-minded and clear about your reason for distributing. The first step with distributing is simply to get the other person's attention. So for me, I normally just say something like, hi, you can say hello. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you say. It's you're trying to introduce yourself and you're trying to capture their attention. The reality is that no one is going to actually stop to hear what you have to say if you don't first get their attention. Psychology tells us that with interpersonal communication, especially at the start, over 90% of what the other person is actually hearing is not actually what you're saying, but rather what you're communicating through your body language. Only about 7% of what they're actually taking in is your actual words. So does that mean that we can just speak anything, just total garbage and they won't pay attention? No, it doesn't mean that, but what it does mean is that if we want them to actually take the time to try to understand what we're communicating, we first have to be very present and very mindful with our body language because that's what they're listening to when we first start the interaction. Arguably the most effective and universal way to communicate through your body language, friendliness, openness and pleasantness is simply to smile. So when you go to introduce yourself and to get their attention, make sure, if you can, that you do it with a smile. It really, really does help. Confidence is another very important trait that we want to convey when we're out distributing. So you can do this in a number of ways, but remembering the focus on our body language, you want to have very good upright posture, you want to be relaxed, you want to be calm and you want to be assured that what you really have to offer is something valuable and meaningful for the other person. If you appear timid, if you appear shy, if you appear uncertain yourself about what it is that you're going to say, the other person probably won't want to stick around to hear you out. But if you can convey confidence along with friendliness and along with pleasantness, the other person is more likely to stop and to hear what you have to say. Now, after you said hi or hello, something to get the other person's attention and you've done so with a smile, you have good, confident body language, the next step is the transition from the introduction onto your spiel or your distributing pitch. For me, I often will say something like, you know, my name is my name uh, and where I'm from 
as a way of building a little bit of introductory familiarity before I launch into my spiel. Whether or not you want to introduce yourself with your name and where you're from is up to you, but just play around with different ways to make the other person feel a little bit more comfortable as you build into your actual distributing spiel. A number of distributors find that they can actually be quite effective with a very short spiel. For example, their spiel might look something like this. This is a book that my friend wrote. We just asked for a few cents donation for the printing, and that's it. If that short distributing spiel will work for you, then that's great. Stick with it. It's very efficient. It's very straight to the point, and it doesn't give the person you're distributing to a lot of reason to reject your spiel. One drawback with it, however, is that it also doesn't say too much about the material that you're handing out. So that's one possible negative to that spill, which we might call Pitch A. My personal distributing spill tends to have four major components. The first part is just some sort of keyword to give the other person an idea about what the book or the DVD is going to give them. Uh, the second part is some sort of emotional component that you know the book or the DVD is going to transfer to them. The third part is some feature, for example, music or that it comes with a glossary, something to that effect. And the fourth part is just some sort of confident assurance that it's going to actually help the other person. So in practice, it might look something like this. If I was distributing a copy of the DVD called The Mark, I might say, this is a DVD that's trying to reduce greed in the world uh, and inspire people to pursue love instead of just focusing on money and materialism. It comes with seven music videos and the concept that it covers literally helped to transform my life. That covers those four main points, and I usually find that if I can get those points in my spiel, I have a pretty high success rate in terms of the other person taking the track and also offering a donation. Another spiel that I sometimes use with groups of two or more people in particular, and especially if they're seated, is a little bit longer. In many ways, it's a bit more like a mini-sermon. That can be okay, however, if the people are already seated. So it might look a little bit like this. It's a DVD, it's against greed. You know, greed is the cause of war. Greed is why we exploit the poor. Greed is why we have political corruption. So we wanna inspire people to choose love over money. We want to inspire people to be more creative and more productive and more useful instead of only focusing on money and materialism. And that's the underlying theme of the film. And after that, I normally ask people to share just a few cents donation towards the cost of printing. So these are just three sample spills to give you some general ideas of things you could say when you're out distributing whatever track or DVD you might be handing out. Obviously, you're not limited to just these three, and I would encourage you to play around with mixing and matching different approaches. It's through experimentation that you might discover what works best for you. It's just to give you some general ideas, and hopefully, they'll give you some groundwork that you might find helpful as you do the experimenting yourself. After you have given your distributing spiel, the next step is to simply ask for some small donation towards the cost of printing. And your reason for doing this is actually twofold. One is obviously so that you can have the funds available to print more materials so that you can hand them out to more people. But also, psychology tells us that people are more likely to actually value something if they give something for it. And a good brother of mine and I, we, we recently did a bit of an experiment where we were handing out books for free uh, outside of a busy station. Uh, we did maybe about a thousand books in a day where we handed them out for free. And the number of those books which we found that were either littered, thrown in the rubbish bin, or just lying down on the floor left as if they were not worth anything, it was just painful to observe. And it really, really reinforced in my mind the reason why we ask people to give something for what they receive. The simplest way to ask for a donation is to simply ask for a few cents donation at the end of your spiel. It's very simple, it's very straight to the point, and if it works for you, 
then that's great. I encourage you to try it. In recent years, however, more and more people have stopped carrying cash or coins and instead have started using either cards or even devices for payment via their phone. So you might find that when you ask someone for a few cents donation, their response is to tell you that they have no money. Of course, sometimes when they say that, they're not really telling the truth, but other times they are telling the truth. They literally don't have any cash or physical money on their person. I'm usually prepared in my own mind for the likelihood that they're going to tell me they have no money and I have a response already prepared in advance. When they say, I don't have any money, I usually respond by saying, well, what if I were to say that it doesn't have to be money? Generally, they respond to that by saying, well, what do you mean? And that's when I'm able to move on to the next part of my spiel with regard to asking for a donation. When they ask that, I normally explain a little bit about the concept of a gift economy and how they can literally share anything they like. I try to explain that it's not so important what they share, but just the idea that they give something of value that shows that they're interested in what they receive. Uh, a lot of times I may even off offer some examples of things they can give. So, for example, I might say you can give a writing pen, which is a, a common item of value that a lot of people carry. Or I might say if they have a car that they can buy me a coffee. Or I might say that they can give some gum, which is another item that a lot of people carry. Basically, it doesn't so much matter what it is they're giving, but just if it has value, it shows that they actually value what they receive. And it means they're that much more likely to actually read or to actually watch what you're giving them as opposed to if you gave it to them and they gave nothing in exchange. A high percentage of the time, once I explain that it's not necessary to give money in exchange for the track I'm offering, but that they can give anything they like, the other person will often say something like, actually, let, let me check my, my wallet. I may actually have some coins down at the bottom. And that goes to show that once it became clear for them that it wasn't really their money I was after, they suddenly became more inspired to actually share something because they could see that my motivation was not financial. Of course, other times I have had people that do give me things in exchange. Everything from coffees and teas to gift cards, bracelets, even this little necklace that I'm wearing. People will share whatever they feel inspired to share and it's up to us to be prepared to freely receive it. And to me, that's a large part of the fun. Now, if someone tells me they have no money and I tell them it doesn't have to be money that you give, and yet they still don't want to share anything on their person, whether it's a pen, whether it's a gum, whether it's an old gift card, I tend to accept that what they're kind of communicating is that they're just not interested. Obviously, you're going to have exceptions. You will find individuals who literally have nothing, no money, no objects, nothing they can give. And if you're fairly convinced that that's the case, then by all means, give them the track for free. But on the whole, I tend to find that if people don't want to part with anything, what they're kind of saying between the lines is I'm simply not interested. And that's okay. They don't have to be. It's up to them. We just have to give them the opportunity to accept something that could potentially change their life for the better. Of course, in order to get someone to stop and give us a donation for what we're offering, we first need to manage to get them to stop. And that can at times be a bit tricky. You know, it's very easy to do if someone's already seated, if they're already slowed down, if they're already come to a halt. But if they're on the go, it can be a little bit difficult to convince them to actually slow down and stop for you. So in light of that, I'm going to give you a suggestion or two that you could try to make that happen. A street charity collector who was quite good at getting people to stop once shared with me a technique called the 10-5-2 principle. And it basically goes like this. When someone is 10 meters away, you greet them by saying hi or hello. When they come closer to you and are roughly five meters away, you try to think of something kind of clever, kind of charming, maybe a bit engaging to get them to give you some attention. It's a way of getting their interest before you move on to your shooting spiel. So for example, I might say something like, hey, you're a dude, I'm a dude, come on man, let's chat. Even something little like that can be enough to convey your personality, to show the other person that you're a real person, and to get them to actually stop, plant their feet, and hear what you have to say next. 
Finally, when they're roughly two meters away, I'll often stretch out my hand to shake their hand or I might move on directly to offering them the book of a DVD. At this point, they've known enough and they've seen enough to be convinced that at least you're not some crazy guy that's out to attack them, but rather you're a friendly person that's trying to offer them something that seems pleasant and that seems upbeat. And that's often enough to effectively transform your distributing process. So along those lines of the 1052 principle, I have another little gimmick that I often use that not only can create interest and openness in the other person, but often manages to lift my own spirits as well. So it's basically just asking the other person how they feel about high fives. The way it works is kind of like this. When they're 10 meters away, once again, you just say hi. When they're five meters away, you could say, hey, how do you feel about high fives? And finally, when they're two meters away, you just put up your hand and you offer them a high five. Now, Will they always take the track after they've done that? No, not always, but I usually find that just that short interaction puts a smile on their face, makes them more open to what you have to offer, and can often help to make you feel a bit happier inside yourself. And that has a twofold benefit in the sense that it makes the other person more inclined to receive what you're offering, but it also has a knock-on effect for the next person that you approach because you'll be in a more positive state and that will transfer to the other person making them more likely to stop. It's been said that motion creates emotion and since so many people buy things on the basis of their emotions rather than on the basis of logic, it's very crucial that we be mindful of the emotional state that we're projecting when we're out distributing. So if you're outside of a busy shopping center or a busy train station and hundreds of people are walking past you and you're getting tons of rejection, you may find that your emotional state quickly denigrates. And this can prove exponentially detrimental to your distributing experiences, the other person coming behind since it's your negative state and rejects you on that basis. To combat this tendency, I try to find spots where I can move around a bit, where I have the ability to create a different emotion even if my first or last encounter with a person I'm distributing to is a bit negative. I can change directions, I can move a little bit and I can transfer from a negative state back to a positive state so that I'm able to convey those positive emotions to the person that I'm approaching. You're probably familiar with the phrase following the crowd and unfortunately it's just a reality that in a crowd most people will follow the crowd. Rather than taking the mental effort to actually make judgments based on what they have experienced and seen with their own eyes, they will base their judgments on the perceived judgments of those around them. It's a very rare to find an individual in a crowd who's willing to actually go against the crowd and form their own judgments. That's simply a reality of life that we have to bear in mind when we're distributing. So, relating that to what we just covered earlier about walking, motion, and emotion. Say you're in a crowd, and the person you offer a track to rejects your offer, and then the next person says no, and then the next person says no. The chances are that the following people that follow in that crowd are just going to copy and mimic the behavior of the people in front of them. What that means is you might find yourself getting a barrage of rejection that only further reinforces in the mind of the public that what you have to offer is not worth accepting. Now, how do you combat that? You can consider things like turning and changing direction after you get a rejection. So if you're going in one direction and someone refuses your approach, consider turning the other way, changing your emotion, changing your focus, walking in the opposite direction and offering someone else. The other person on the other side may not have seen you just get rejected and they may be more neutral to actually hearing you out and accepting what you have to offer. Don't get trapped in the rut of just staying flat-footed, staying stationary, and letting person after person say no. That will only enhance the crowd effect and denigrate your distributing. So try to move around a bit. Try to enhance the motion and emotion that you're conveying, and try to diffuse the crowd effect by changing direction if it's going to be helpful. Distributing in car parking lots for example, outside of a Walmart shopping center, is usually a bit different from distributing on the high street or in front of, for example, a busy train station. 
The people in parking lots tend to be a bit more relaxed and a bit more casual than people on the main street. And that's something that you need to be mindful of when you're considering your approach with car park distributing. Timing is an important factor to be mindful of as well when you're doing parking lot distributing. For the most part, you don't want to offer a track to someone that's on their way into the store. It's much better if you can focus primarily on people coming out of the store and get them as they're approaching their car or as they're leaving the shopping center as opposed to going in. Location is something that you want to be mindful of as well when you're doing parking lot distributing. I generally find it's most effective to hover in an area where you can spot the customers as they're exiting the store and you can kind of choose which of the customers you want to approach first depending on things like their pace, uh, the emotional state that they're projecting and whether or not you feel like they might be likely to accept the track that you're offering. You want to try to time it so that you make your approach right when they're unlocking their trunk to put their grocery items, for example, into their car so that they don't have a lot of things in their hands when you offer them something. A lot of these things are going to just become intuitive the more you get out there, just out on the streets and distributing for yourself. It will become almost like second nature, but I'm sharing these tips with you now to help you as you get started. It's helpful as well to bear in mind that part of our responsibility as Christian evangelists is to actually have a genuine love for the sheep. And in order for us to communicate that to the people that we're distributing to, we often have to take a personal interest in them. We need to find a way to show them that we care about them as individuals and are not just trying to rush through a transaction to make a sale. One of the most effective ways to take an interest in the people who stop is simply to ask them questions. They can be very simple questions, like where they're from, like how their day has been, or even if they have big plans for the weekend. The exact question you ask is not so significant, but rather what's important is that you take an interest in them and show them that you care about them as people, which is an important part of our testimony as Christians. So, wrapping up, we've given you in this video seven general tips that you can apply to your distributing and you can start doing them now. You need to start remembering with your approach the significance of your body length. Remember to smile. Move on pretty quickly into transitioning into your spiel. Try to get more confident with it so that you can say it without having to think too much about your words, but really just conveying the positive emotions that go along with what you're offering them. Don't forget to ask the person for a donation and Remember, this is for two important reasons. One, so that you can print more of the resources to give to other people, but also so that they actually value what it is that you're giving them. I've given you a few different suggestions of things you could do to get the other person to stop, particularly if you're in a place where the people are in a hurry and it's hard to get them to stop. The different things you could try and just, just play around with to encourage them to actually stop, give you at least a couple seconds to offer them something and, and you know, just to hear you out. Also, we've talked about things like crowd psychology, which is so significant to be mindful of when we're distributing in locations where there's a crowd. You're gonna to have to apply some of these same principles even if you're distributing in a parking lot situation. And finally, let's not forget about the responsibility we have to show genuine Christian love to those that we're distributing to. And that's most effectively communicated by taking an interest in the other person and showing that you care. These are seven useful tips that can help you in your distributing, and I hope that you're able to apply them now. In conclusion, let's be especially mindful of the great commission from our Lord and Master Himself, Jesus, which is for us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. You know how to do it. You have what you need to get started. So, let's do it.